guys, how are ya? Here's a video for you young nerdlings out there. Title is Learn From Your Mistakes. So this is about my personal mistakes I made in terms of finance and investment. Thankfully, I was able to recover from my mistakes and uh, I'm okay. Don't worry about me. But I thought these four simple lessons would help you in a big way. So let's jump into it. So I'm just going to read off it. Makes my life easy. Learn from your mistakes and set some new rules accordingly, but don't beat yourself up over it. It's part of the process of learning. So yeah, you're going to make mistakes in your life constantly, especially in your teens, in your 20s, and your 30s. Hopefully you make less mistakes as you get older, but you're still going to make mistakes. The key about mistakes is to learn from them and to move on. Mistakes and failures are actually your best teachers. So let me continue. Believe me, I've made some bad calculations in my financial and personal life. It will pass. One of my jokes I used to say, uh, if I pondered and considered all the personal and financial mistakes I made in my life, out of pride, I would have to kill myself. That's a joke. Anyway, for example, a long time ago, I learned the super important investing rule. Number one, don't put more than 10 to 15% of your capital in one investment. Otherwise, the ups and downs and the stress will take up too much of your mental energy. If you lose 50% of 10% of your total cash, it's really easy to ride emotionally. But if you lose 50% of 30% of your cash, that gets painful. So when you have a large position, and let's say you put all your money to Bitcoin, or for example, or half your money in Bitcoin, Bitcoin's going crazy. And even though you're convinced and you know that Bitcoin will go up quite a bit. Of course, you never know, but let's say you know that. If you got too much invested, that wild ride will, you won't be able to sleep at night, you're gonna be nervous, uh, you're gonna be twitching like crazy, and um, a lot of times people will get freaked out and they'll sell out of their position, their investment out of fear, never being able to ride it out to realize the ultimate gains. So that's the first reason why you don't want to put too much of your money in a particular position. Number two, too much invested in a single position is way too risky because you can never know the future with 100% accuracy. You may think Bitcoin is the best ever, but you don't really know. So if you are convinced that it is the best ever, don't put more than 10 to 15% of your money into crypto. Just don't do it. It's too risky because uh, you never know what will happen. Number three, invest in the strongest company in a weak sector. So you have sectors in the industry. You got tech, that's the tech sector. You got the oil industry, that's the oil sector. Maybe you include all commodities in that. That's a debate. Anyhow, uh, you could have retail, that's another sector, etc. So when you're investing in a market, you typically want to find, if you want to get the best gains, you find a sector that's kind of weak. So let's say at a particular point in time, tech is down. Right now, tech is down. So what you want to do is you want to find the best company in the tech while the whole tech industry is down and invest in that one because they're going to recover. They're going to survive. You don't want to make the mistake of investing in the weak company in a weak sector. Not a good idea. On the other hand, if you have a sector where everything is going gangbusters, that's where you might want to invest in with speculative money in one of the weaker hands, one of the companies where they're kind of on the fringe, they're making money, but not as much, but they can make a lot of money because they're just going to grab that, that uh, boom in that sector. Again, these are broad rules. You have to know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, then you should buy index funds. And in fact, 99% of you should just buy index funds. That's it. No stress. You can outperform 90% of individual investors and commercial investors, and you do fantastic. Number four, always keep a year, about a year, worth of FU money so you don't worry about paying your bills. FU money is money, money. You can tell people, eh, I don't want to deal with you. I'm out of here. You have a year of cash to cover all your bills, all your, your rent, your mortgage, if you have a mortgage, all your expenses, your food, everything for a year. So you don't have to worry about paying the bills. This gives you so much freedom psychologically. It's so important. One year worth of FU money. Some people will say six months. Some people say two years. I've changed my mind a little bit. 
if you're working for a company, solve a job, you've been there two or three years, the company's doing well, you like it, then you can maybe reduce your FU stash to six months. If you're freelancing, at least one year, well, at least one year of FU money. I would go more for a year and a half, two years, if you're freelancing. Anyway, there you go. Those are my uh, four rules. Key takeaway from this video is learn from your mistakes and you'll be well off. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.